Good morning. morning. We welcome all of you to God's house this morning. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we continue our series on precious gems in Isaiah the prophet, um, we'll focus this morning with the theme of the service being my God's good news, excuse me, may God's good news move us to love and serve him. Speak, O Lord, hymn 633. We continue our worship on page 155 in the front part of our hymnal, the service setting one, page 155. We invite the congregation to arise. We begin our worship as we began our walk with Jesus when we were baptized. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be our redeemer and savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. The congregation may be seated. Scripture readings are printed in our worship folders if you'd enjoy following along. 
So our first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 1, beginning with verse 13, and we'll be pondering these words in the sermon today. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations, I cannot bear your evil assemblies. Your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. The word of the Lord. We invite the congregation to turn to the front part of your hymnal where we find Psalm 25. This psalm is an awesome prayer, really. It includes um, asking God to guide us, to teach us, and to forgive us. All reasons to love and serve him. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you I trust, O Lord my God. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you, do not let me be put to shame. Show me your ways, Lord, teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul, in you I trust, O Lord my God. Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Look on my affliction and my distress, and take away all my sins. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul, in you I trust, O Lord my God. We have a psalm prayer at the bottom of the page in our worship folder. We invite the congregation to read, a, read that prayer along. Heavenly Father, do not remember the sins of our youth and our rebellious ways, Remember instead the great mercy and love that you have shown your people for hundreds of generations. Forgive our sins and teach us to live lives of integrity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Our second reading is recorded for us in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, beginning with verse one. And here note the persecution 
and the blessings for the Apostle Paul as he's sharing the word of God. And he continues in spite of persecution with the God's encouragement to share the message of, the, of love for God and serving him. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them. Because he had the same occupation, he stayed and worked with them, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he led a discussion in the synagogue, trying to persuade both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul was entirely devoted to preaching the word testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when they opposed Paul and slandered him, he shook out his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. He left that place and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus a worshiper of God whose house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue leader, believed in the Lord together with his entire household, and many of the Corinthians, when they heard, believed and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid, but keep on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you and no one will lay a hand on you to harm you, because I have many people in this city. He stayed there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We invite the congregation to be on page 161 in the front of your hymnal, where we have the gospel acclamation, which we will sing following the verse of the day. Alleluia, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. Alleluia. <laughs> Our gospel reading is taken from Matthew's gospel, chapter 13, beginning with verse 1 and some selected verses. And here we have a parable illustrating the different ways that God's word can be received. May it be for us like the fourth kind of seed that was planted. We invite the congregation out of love and respect for our Savior to arise. That same day, Jesus left the house and was sitting by the sea. A large crowd gathered around him, so he stepped into a boat and sat down, while all the people stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, as he sowed some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. Immediately the seed sp sprang up, because the soil was not deep. 
But when the sun rose, the seed was scorched. Because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns. The thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on good ground and produced grain, some 100 times, some 60, and some 30 times more than was sown. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. So listen carefully to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the seed that was sown along the path. The seed that was sown on rocky ground is the person who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he is not deeply, he is not deeply rooted and does not endure. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed that was sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it produces no fruit. But the seed that was sown on the, goods, the good ground is the one who continues to hear and understand the word. Indeed, he continues to produce fruit some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times more than was sown. The Gospel of the Lord. The congregation may be seated as we continue with our next hymn, hymn 395, What Grace Is This? What grace is this, my Lord and King, has set his face to suffer me. My God eternal God is to bring eternal life to me. What grace is this that every heart would stoop to have the cross of wood and walk the road of rock and mud as sinners rode for me. What grace is this, O Lord of all? He yields to conscious Pilate's law, and lets the Romans hammers call a rush of blood for me. What grace is this, who The sinless son bears each misdeed. He pays for all for me. What grace is this once wrapped in cross and gently laid in manger trough? He's taken dead from wretched cross and wrapped again. Are you saved through faith? And that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God's word in which we wish to ponder, as we already noted, is recorded for us in the first chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning with the 13th verse. Let's read together a couple of the selected verses there. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. 
Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. This is the word of our great God. In Christ Jesus, our one and only Savior, my dear friends, what do you think? Can one's worship, that is worship of the one true God, be sinful? As you may have noted from a scripture reading a little earlier, God has a lot to say about that in our text. So let's ponder this thought together. Worship God condemns and then worship God treasures. There's repentance and there's rejoicing. Right in the beginning of this first chapter, as we noted last Sunday, we read, for the Lord has spoken. And we were reminded last week, this isn't such some human being's words. They need to be taken to heart. God himself is addressing his people and he's addressing you and me this morning. This is underscored a bit earlier than our text where Isaiah records these words. Hear the word of the Lord. And right after this, how eye-opening, how shocking actually. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. These are rulers of God's people. Can you imagine how shocking this would be for them to hear these words from Isaiah? Rulers of Sodom? And then right away, listen to the law of God, you people of Gomorrah. All of you remember about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? You remember that God was going to destroy the wicked city, and you remember what the wickedness was, right? In Sunday school, we just learned they were really wicked. Imagine, first time I read my Bible, homosexuality was the sin. Ay, 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 ay. Eye-opening. Words that need to be addressed in our country today, right? And in countries around the world. Anyway, just think, Abraham prayed for those wicked cities, that God would spare them, and it went all the way down to ten believers. If there were ten believers in these two huge wicked cities, God would spare them. What grace, what mercy. There weren't even ten. Of course, Abraham's nephew Lot was there. So he and his family were told to leave. You remember what happened. His wife didn't listen. She looked back and became a pillar of salt. But anyway, these wicked cities that were destroyed by God in his holy wrath over this sin. And of course, he has wrath over every sin. So our text begins after these eye-opening and shocking statements. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. So just the opposite of words we're familiar with from our liturgy for the evening service. May my prayer be set forth before you like incense and the lifting up my, of my hands like the evening sacrifice. God, be pleased with our prayers and with our, our, um, our offerings. So it's just the opposite in this, these words before us in Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah continues, new moon, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your evil assemblies. Your new moon festivals are your appointed feasts. My soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. And we're going, what? If you read the books of Moses, especially Leviticus and Numbers, over and over again, God speaks to Moses about the offerings he wants. Moses shares it with Aaron and the people. Over and over again, all kinds of, of details about the specific offerings he wants. And, and for the various feasts and festivals, you wouldn't believe it. All of the animals that have to be sacrificed for seven days straight, actually. But now, even though they're doing it, they're despicable to our God. They're a burden. He's weary of bearing them. What's up? And included with offerings he finds detestable, when you 
spread out your hands in prayer. I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. What's up? He answers the question this way. Your hands are full of blood. Now, my friends, it doesn't mean they're all murderers. What it does mean is they are guilty of sin, just as guilty of sin before God as a murderer is. So a picture of, the, of their detestable sin. And, and what is that sin? Well, first of all, note the next words. Wash and make yourselves clean. As we all know, we can't do it. We can't even erase one sin, much less all the detestable sins of which God's people are guilty here. We all know the only way to wash away sin. It's fix your eyes on Jesus. Jesus died for sins. He saved us. And we all treasure the verse from 1 John verse 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin, washes them all away. He continues, take your evil deeds out of my sight. What's the evil? Drawn from the context. Remember right away in the beginning, I have raised up children and they have rebelled against me. So instead of true worship from the heart, treasuring a God whose love is as high as the heavens, they're performing these deeds thinking they can earn God's favor, thinking they can have a right to God's love just by what they're doing. Even though they're, even though they're doing what is right, they have the wrong motives. They're, they're like the Pharisees, the Pharisees who persecuted Paul for, when he shares the truth. We're not saved by our works. We're saved only by grace, that, like we sang in that beautiful hymn just prior to the sermon. So what would God do? say to you and me today? Would he say to our rulers, rulers of Sodom, would he say to you and me, people listen to my law, people of Gomorrah? Well, he would say that, dear friends, if we have the same attitude as God's people here in Isaiah's day. Do we think that coming to church earns the right to be children of God and we need to go to heaven because we we're so good at worshiping the Lord? If so, we're just like God's people in Isaiah's day. Do we think by bringing our offerings that uh, we're buying a ticket to heaven? If so, we're just like the people in Isaiah's day. Might we be people who think we're really doing good with the amount of offerings we bring the Lord when maybe really we could do a lot better and instead of producing fruit 30 or 60-fold, produce fruit 100-fold? God has so richly blessed us, hasn't he, with uh, gifts of our body, our soul, our mind, guiding us and protecting us. Well, dear friends, not always, right? We're all sinners. God could say to all of us that our hands are full of blood. And if we think that our good deeds, whatever we do, are good enough in God's eyes, then we need to be reminded of these words from Isaiah 64, verse 6. All our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Isn't that something? Even the good things you and I do in the eyes of men, which we all appreciate, in God's holy eyes, because it's hands filled with blood, the blood of sin, to our holy God, they're filthy rags. Can't earn God's favor. Impossible for us to wash our own sins away. So this is a little different situation than what we saw in Genesis chapter 4 where Cain was just going through the motions. His heart wasn't in it, even though he was doing something right, sacrificing. No, in our text, their heart is in it, but it's for the wrong reasons, to gain honor for themselves instead of honoring our great God whose mercy endures forever. So yes, Worship God condemns is when it's done for wrong motives. And, and worship God treasures includes repentance. So acknowledging our sins, acknowledging we have a savior from sin. 
and wanting to change sinful ways. And then there's rejoicing. So Isaiah continues, stop doing wrong, learn to do right, seek justice, encourage the oppressed, defend the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. So in other words, you believe? Well, show it. Show it by your love, love for God, love for others. And when I read about defending the, the cause of the fatherless, I think of what was shared with us at one circuit pastor's meeting where it was shared, and, and you know this, there's all kinds of foster children looking for a decent home to stay while they're rotten, if you can say that rotten home from which they come, can be straightened out, hopefully, and go back to their mom and dad. So a place, a foster home for children that need a little help. And he shared the idea of a whole congregation working together so that if one family took a child or two in, the congregation could support them, you know, provide a meal, take turns providing a meal, uh, help with respite, take the children in for a day or so. Wouldn't that be awesome if we could do that and, and put these words into practice as a congregation? And, and of course, don't forget the widows. Come now. Isn't this something? Here he's just lambasted his people with the law that they needed to hear. Eye-opening, people of Sodom, people of Gomorrah, and then explaining why. Now he says, come now. Instead of depart from me, ye cursed, come now. So we really have the law that makes God's people there cringe, and you and me too. Now he says, come. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Reason? Looks like I'm guilty, looks like we're all guilty. What do we have to figure out here? Oh, look who's speaking now. The Lord, Yahweh, our God, who is not only almighty and all-knowing, but whose love is as high as the heavens, who's a God of grace. And what he wants his people to have, and all people to have. Isn't this a beautiful picture? Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. And if the devil isn't throwing our sins in our face so that they're scarlet in our own eyes, don't doubt it. Whatever sin, thought, word, or deed, it's scarlet. It's bright red in the eyes of our God. But because he's a God of grace, Jesus paid the price so that they're gone. The record is clean. And this picture reminds me of what I witnessed at the University of Nebraska. I started the ministry in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I had the pleasure of attending some Nebraska football games, um, which were just packed. It's in their glory days, see? What a blessing to be there in their glory days. It's quite exciting. And inside that stadium was the third largest city, if you will, in the state of Nebraska. So people paid to have an airplane fly over the stadium while all the people were gathered there and had advertisement on it. And, I, and it was in big red letters so they could be, be easily seen. Now just think, dear friends, if that plane were flying over with your sins or mine in red on that banner, we'd want to find the nearest hole and hide. But just like this banner is white, that's your record and mine through a Savior who died and rose again to take all our sins away. Dear friends, I hope that our attitude about this great news is the same as one of the Nebraska football players. It was one of those plays, you know, the last moments of the game. Nebraska's behind. They just have seconds left. The quarterback launches the ball, and lo and behold, the receiver catches it. And in the last seconds, Nebraska wins the game. So the receiver's being inter interviewed. Was that pretty exciting? And the football player responded, yeah, it was exciting. 
but not as exciting as the day I became a Christian. Now that player did it right, dear friends. He played football to the glory of God. Oh, if all of God's people will remember, let's not take credit for our accomplishments. Let's give glory to God for what he enables us to do. He's such a great God. We want to love and serve him. Our text is an excellent example, dear friends, of what we find throughout the Bible, two main doctrines. We have law, law that makes us cringe sometimes, like in our text. And then there's gospel. So perhaps you even remember this, SOS. The law, like you see the mirror there, shows our sin. The gospel, here's the good news, shows our Savior. Dear friends, that's what we want to hear in every sermon. If it's not there, something's missing. Something major is missing. Which, that's what we want in every Bible class. And that's why we want to be in Bible class as well as church. So that our faith in that Savior doesn't die and we start thinking we're such good people. We don't need church. What? No one's good. Not in God's eyes. We need a good Savior. And we have a good Savior. And having him, we have reason, dear friends, no matter how difficult life may be, to rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice, Paul writes. So, isn't that awesome? When we have Jesus, we have everything, and we can rejoice even if we're hurting, even if we have challenges as high as the sky. We have a, love, a God who loves us, whose love is even higher. So, no, we don't want worship that God condemns. We don't want to be worshiping ourselves or glorifying our names. We want to worship God and treasure his love. Practice repentance, which means, yeah, cringe with the law. We deserve his wrath. But rejoice that we have a Savior and show that that love is alive by loving and serving him. Amen. And the peace of God, which is beyond our dreams, shall guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we join in confessing our faith in the one true God, the only God who's solved the problem of sin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We rise and pray. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we thank you for having kept us safe during the night. Now we pause at the gateway of another week to ask you to go with us. We do not know what this week holds in store, pleasure or pain, health or sickness, sunshine or shadow. However, we are not afraid if you are with us as our companion, for you love us with an everlasting love and guard and protect us from all evil. We need your presence every step of the way. At the beginning of this week, we ask only that you would stay close beside us, for though we know not what the future holds, we know who holds the future. Bless us in whatever we do. Make us strong physically, mentally, morally, and spiritually. Watch over us and over those we love. We ask this in the name of our Savior. We pray that you would hold your hand over all who struggle with pain or are recovering from uh, surgery. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for the rain you have sent. You provided richly in Fort Atkinson with over an inch of rain, we understand only a, a little amount was experienced here. So wherever 
drought conditions continue, graciously hear our prayer and send the needed moisture. We're always grateful, Lord, for the moisture you do send and continue to use it as you use your word. Use your word to nurture our faith and our souls and use the rain to nurture the earth that it may bear much fruit. We pray in Jesus' name, and in his name we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we continue with our next hymn. Take my life and let it be consecrated. and pray. Heavenly Father, our almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The congregation may be seated then as we continue our final hymn. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in Him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my strong and my short defense, and He will be my Savior. Therefore, you shall. 